Greetings, everyone, and welcome to today's Community Action Month Toolkit Release Webinar. As you may have heard, May is Community Action Month, and it is right around the corner. Uh, today's webinar will be convened by Communications Lead at the Partnership, Johnny Udile, uh, Communications Lead at NASCAS, Eric Benna, and myself, Jovita Tolbert, here at the Partnership. So, uh, why Community Action Month? Well, it's a time for us to celebrate our success and share our success stories, to have some fun, and to thank our staff and our volunteers. But beyond that, this is really a time for us to speak with one unified voice, uh, to raise the visibility of the network, to share our impact beyond those that we serve and our usual partners. So with that, I'm gonna turn the webinar over to, uh, to Johnny, and he's gonna share a bit more about the um, the Community Action Month Toolkit, all of the details, all of the new resources that we've included. Um, I think folks will be excited to see some of the new features, the updated items uh, included in this year's uh, Community Action Month Toolkit. Johnny? Oh, Johnny, I think you're still on mute. Ah. Hey, everyone. Thanks, Jovita. So um, the purpose of the toolkit is to really uh, provide uh, resources to help promote your agency, help you raise awareness around Community Action Month, and help you share your stories and showcase your successes. Um, you'll find it at communityactionpartnership.com slash community hyphen action hyphen month. Um, if you click on, we'll send you the slides after this, and it's hyperlinked on this page, so it'll take you right to there. You can uh, download the toolkit, you can download the calendar, and we have dozens of memes that you can also download. Um, this shows the table of contents. Um, as you scroll down, you'll see that everything's hyperlinked, so if you're going through and you want to say, oh, meme creator, I want to go right to it, just click on page 17, and it'll take you to the meme creator, so it's really easy to navigate. Um, here we have the welcome letter, promise, and about the toolkit. This is pages four through six. We've got new content, um, new press release and proclamation templates. Um, we've got new, all new memes. All the memes are new. We've got new sample tweets and new talking points that all include the data and the messaging from the impact report, which if you haven't checked it out, that's also hyperlinked in the, uh, in the slides. Um, there's the promise reminder, of course. Um, and then the how-to section, which really encourages you to customize our template because your local stats, um, your local stories are really going to be more impactful to your community. Um, at the same time, we do encourage you to sort of be aware of the leverage and the power of associating with the national network. Um, we've got a bunch of fun activities scheduled. Um, yeah, that, those are on page seven. Um, this year, uh, Huggy Heart Day is May 2nd, which is a Thursday. Um, we're encouraging you to host a Color the Huggy Heart Day. Uh, post those Huggy Hearts on social media. Uh, tag us on Twitter at CA Partnership. Um, we've got a couple new hashtags this year. One we're really excited about is Impact Wednesday. Um, we've got uh, Impact Wednesday memes and sample tweets that you can share um, that showcase the impact on a national level, but you can also customize uh, the memes or the tweets uh, with your local data. Um, we've got Photoshop files for some of the impact report memes in a Dropbox folder, and that's posted to the Community Action Month page. Um, under impact report memes, you'll find that. There's a little link, you can click on that. Um, if you're not too handy with Photoshop, um, or if you're having trouble, you can always reach out to me uh, ju daily at communityactionpartnership.com and my email is actually also listed at the end of the slide um, or on our website under staff. Uh, another hashtag that we have that's new is the shout out Saturday. But we're encouraging you to uh, shout out your local partners. Um, we've got new media tips, um, Mission Monday. So on May 20th, you'll share your agency's mission. We're, we're encouraging you. If, to uh, share your agency's mission using our new meme creator. Um, you just click and download the Word doc and 
type in your mission onto the uh, the meme. Uh, we've got pizza party day on May 17th. Um, post a pizza party, take photos, post those to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram if you have it. Um, tag us on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, our handles are CA Partnership for both of those. This brings us to the calendar. So if you click on the calendar, it'll you'll download the PDF. Um, use this to follow along guide your activities or maybe just inspire you in coming up with an activity of your own. I will note that even though it does not list that we have sample tweets under We Care Wednesday and Weatherization Wednesday, we do have sample tweets for you there. Um, we Care Wednesday is May 15th. That's International Day of Families. We've got sample tweets for you. And then Weatherization Wednesday is May 29th. We've got sample tweets for you on that day as well. And uh, as John is moving forward, just want to emphasize that this is really an opportunity, once again, um, for us to unify and collectively, the more of us who come together to participate on a certain day, um, the broader our reach or impact on those days as we're raising our voice to uh, increase visibility about the network. Thanks, Jovita. Um, this brings us to Impact Wednesday. We're really excited about this. Shout out to Project Bravo. This is actually something I saw that they were doing. They were sort of piggybacking off the release, the impact report, me, uh, the impact report, um, and the uh, the toolkit that came along with that, which uh, gave you guidance on customizing your own memes. And they put out their own memes that showcase their local data. And every Wednesday, they were they were posting these images uh, with the hashtag Impact Wednesday. And we really thought that'd be a great a uh, great hashtag to incorporate into the toolkit. Um, so we've got uh, social media ready memes on the 8th and the 22nd. Or if you like, uh, like I mentioned before, we have about a dozen impact report memes that we have Photoshop files for, so those are all customizable. Uh, we've got sample tweets available. You can post those or, or customize those, swap out the national data with your local data if you so choose. Um, encourage you to remember to use the hashtag Impact Wednesday. Um, and you can find all the memes on the Community Action Month page, and that is it's hyperlinked right here in the slides as well. We got a bunch of new memes. So you'll see that there's over a dozen. All the memes are new. Um, so those are on the web page as well. And you just, you just click the file to download. Oh, and I wanted to mention that all these memes are made on Canva which is a really great tool if, you, if you're not familiar with it. Makes all the graphics uh, really professional looking. It's really easy to use. Um, I made all these memes on there, uh, designed a toolkit on there. So if you don't have Canva and you, you really are interested in trying to make your own graphics, I highly, highly recommend it. Huggy Heart Day, uh, May 2nd? Yes, May 2nd. Um, you can find the Huggy Heart on page nine. So it's a great way to promote, say, your Head Start or your early Head Start program. So it's the color of the Huggy Heart day. You know, post those Huggy Hearts to social media. Remember to tag us at CA Partnership on Twitter uh, or Instagram. And with that, I am going to pass this off to Eric from NASCAST. Hi everyone, this is Eric from NASCASP. Um, I, NASCASP, for those of you that aren't familiar, we work with all of the state CSPG offices. So um, we're just going to run through today uh, some of our Community Action Month efforts to support the great work that the partnership's doing and that fantastic toolkit that Johnny just started jumping into. So um, some things that we have planned, um, we are working with all of our CSBG state offices to do some great state spotlight blogs on our um, state of poverty blogs. So we want to focus on some innovative state initiatives and best practices, um, also some impactful client stories. So that's, that's one major effort that we're going to be doing. Um, additionally, uh, we are going to be sending out a toolkit to state folks that uh, 
is going to help states promote CSBG within their state office. So we know that, you know, a state office might be overseeing CSBG and TANF and LIHEAP and a lot of different things. We want to put together, we're going to put out some resources to help um, state CSBG folks really increase the awareness and education of the program within their own state. Um, and then finally, again, to, to uh, support the great toolkit that the partnership has, you know, NASCASP works with all of the CSBG data. Um, and we have uh, worked with the CSPGIS in the past and the annual report going forward. So we're going to be putting out some, some mini toolkits uh, focused on that CSPG data. Um, here's just an example and a link to our blog. Um, that's where those state spotlight blogs will live, and we're really looking forward to putting those out there, having at least a couple of those each week of Community Action Month. Um, one thing that I wanted to highlight in terms of data, and a lot of folks will be familiar with this, we do uh, a state-by-state -state fact sheets for that CSPG data. So we have the latest available, the FI 2017 data that was um, submitted. So that's uh, based and broken out by region, but it's a state level fact sheet, and there's a lot of uh, good information on there that you can use. Um, kind of how those uh, fact sheets can be utilized if you are meeting with a representative or a policymaker in your state, these are a great leave behind to hand out to them. They can also be used at education events for other community stakeholders, other partners. And then additionally, uh, pieces of the state fact sheets can be used for social media, um, some plug and play stuff to support the, uh, the work that you're doing communicating CSPG during Community Action Month. Um, additionally, there's some good graphics and images you can pull off of those state fact sheets, and they uh, can be used on social media and in newsletters and things like that. And then finally, um, anyone that's working with the press or doing their own blogs, the state fact sheet is a good way to communicate your, your state level impact there, and it could be a great seed for a press story or a blog post. Um, so just an example of some of the mini data toolkits we'll be putting out. Um, you know, we've got some different blurbs and, uh, you know, graphics to go along with those, looking at some of the uh, CSPG data, like the education levels of the CSPG participants, um, additionally looking at some of those NPIs and uh, the outcomes there. So uh, keep an eye out for those. Those will be rolled out on that State of Poverty blog that I mentioned. We'll be sending those out to all of our state folks as well. And then finally, I just wanted to note um, my colleagues here at NASCAS, Pamela Harrison and Mary Beth Schneeber-Remrev, they are our CSBG state assistant team. And you're probably going to see them out and about potentially in your state during Community Action Month. We know that Community Action Month is a big time for uh, state association conferences, state CSBG conferences. So um, our folks will be out there uh, and doing trainings on the annual report and uh, things like that. So uh, keep an eye out. We're really excited to have uh, Pamela and Mary Beth on our team. They joined here in, in 2019, and they've got some a lot of great experience, years of experience in the network, so we're really excited to have them on board. Um, as I mentioned, just keep an eye out for those uh, state spotlight blogs and the um, data resources. There's links to those state fact sheets. We're really excited at NASCAS for Community Action Month and to uh, be able to highlight the impact that CSPG has across the country. Uh, thanks, everyone, and I'll pass it back to Johnny. Thanks, Eric. Um, so this brings us to social media outreach. Um, social media is a really crucial way to promote uh, Community Action Month. Um, here you'll see uh, some of the sample tweets that we have. Um, we've got sample tweets for Fact Friday, Impact Wednesday, Stat Saturday, Training Tuesday, Transformation Tuesday, Weatherization Wednesday, and We Care Wednesday, which is also International Day of Family. Um, we'll move to the next slide. Yeah, so you'll find those on page 11 through 16. You can use those um, or create your own or take one and edit it, swap out, you know, the data that we've put in there with your local data or what have you. Um, 
social media creator. Um, so this is uh, this is new. Well, it's updated. So you'll see that we've got new images here on Mission Monday, May 20th. Um, you can share your mission by uh, just pasting it over uh, the image that we've got there. On uh, Thankful Thursday, May 30th, you can thank folks for participating in Community Action Month. Um, these are really simple. It's just like last year, you click on the image, you download a Word doc, and then you just type in your mission or uh, for Thankful Thursday, uh, paste your staff photo on top of the image. And uh, email me if you have any trouble at all. Um, I can definitely assist you in, uh, in customizing these templates. So here's some more of the memes that we have. You'll see we've got the promise uh, on May 1st. Um, when, you, when you share any of these memes, we're asking that you uh, use the hashtags Community Action Works uh, or We Are 1000 Strong. Um, you'll see we've got uh, May the 4th be with you. That was a really popular one from last year. So we've got a new meme here provided for you. You know, say something about how community action is a united force for opportunity or may the 4th be with you and uplifting people from poverty or something like that. Um, Impact Wednesday, as I already mentioned, we have two of those for the 8th and the 22nd, um, as well as the, uh, the impact report memes that were released with the Impact Report Toolkit. Um, another one we have listed here is the LBJ meme, the hashtag TBT. Um, and then we've got a bunch more on the website. So go to the website, check it out. Um, I really think you guys are gonna like the, the memes that we have for you this year. Social media selfies. So you'll find the selfie sign on page 25. Um, you know, any day is a good day for a selfie, but we're encouraging you guys to uh, take a selfie on Fun Friday, which is May 31st. It's the last day of Community Action Month. Um, take the, uh, I, the I Heart Community Action sign and uh, post your selfie. Uh, tag us, CA Partnership. Um, here's, the, uh, here's what it looks like. I'm sure most of you or all of you are probably familiar with it. Media relations press tips. So we've got uh, a bunch of facts and statistics and talking points. Um, knowing the facts is super important. So um, you'll find those talking points on uh, page 28. Um, you can use those. We also have a list of resources there on that, uh, that same section for finding additional talking points or stats that you can use. Um, another, another pointer is telling stories. So including an anecdote within uh, your messaging can make it more impactful. Um, be clearly, be direct, enunciate, um, and practice regularly because we should really think of interviewing as a skill that you develop. So something that you work on constantly and get better at. Um, we've got tips for how to pitch uh, stories to the press on page 26. Um, some of the tips, be specific. So when you're pitching a story, you know, pitch a specific program uh, that you're excited about or uh, pitch a story that has to do with the impact in a specific area or neighborhood. Be responsive. Uh, media folks work on tight deadlines. So, you know, if you're not responsive, they may pass your story up and move on to the next thing. Uh, be knowledgeable and prepared. So um, use those talking points. Uh, have your facts, your stats, your anecdotes on hand. Um, and be personal, personable, because PR is really about building relationships that are mutually beneficial. And uh, you'll find our press release template on page 30. Here we have the network talking points. So this is another part of the toolkit that's been updated. Um, it outlines the need, how we address the need, our vision, and, and the network talking points have been customized to include the messaging and the data points from the uh, impact report. Um, so we're really excited about that. Video production tips, you'll find these on page 31 to 33. Um, so opening shot is super crucial as well as close, closing shots. Um, a lot of opening shots tend to have something moving towards the camera, closing shots something moving away from the camera. A really famous example in a movie I really love is Taxi Driver. If you remember the opening scene is uh, a taxi cab 
coming towards the camera through the fog and it sort of sets the mood uh, for the whole movie. Um, using a tripod is crucial. Um, it's really hard to keep a camera steady, especially when you're you know, doing an interview. So uh, investing in a tripod is, uh, is uh, not a bad idea. Um, what to wear, you want to avoid uh, patterns that are got a lot going on. You know, solid colors are good. Um, shooting B-roll is crucial. So like B-roll, you're going to use that for transition. So, you know, when you're on site, you know, be thinking about, you know, as you're filming, like shooting that B-roll so you can use it later. And I'll give you an example, um, the UPO video, which some of you probably saw at the last year's annual convention. Uh, me and Diane shot that, and so we've got shots of um, the building outside to introduce the story. Uh, I think it starts with the uh, receptionist answering the phone. You've got shots of people typing, sawing wood, hammering nails. Uh, a great transition is a shot of Diane walking down the hall with one of the UPO reps that transitions from one interview to the next. Um, Lighting is crucial, uh, making sure that uh, whenever, whenever you're filming, especially if you're doing an interview, make sure that, um, that it's quiet, that it's, uh, it's well lit. Um, we've also got editing tips. Um, there's a, a couple resources there, um, some that are hyperlinked that show you the top 10 mistakes to avoid, like tacky transitions or poor audio mix, so check those out. Um, bottom line, when you're when you're when you're shooting, make sure you're looking for your opening shot, those transition shots, and then your closing shots. Oh, and one more thing I will mention in the editing tips is kind of what uh, we talk about, like depending on what kind of video you're doing. So if you're doing a simple video, uh, something like iMovie or even the YouTube editor um, is fine. If it's something that's a little bit more involved, uh, you're going to want to use Premiere or Final Cut Pro. And this brings us to Jovita, and I'm going to pass it off to her. Thanks, Johnny. And so just want to take a moment to talk about proclamations and fundraising during Community Action Month. Um, this Community Action Month, we will be celebrating the 55th anniversary of Community Action. So that does give us the opportunity to make a special appeal uh, for fundraising. Um, also in terms of proclamations, um, it allows us maybe to make a more strong uh, or, or a stronger statement, excuse me, for um, the impact and the lasting impact in particular of Community Action, uh, working to help folks become self-sufficient. So we have fundraising tips and a sample fundraising letter on pages 38 and 39. And then we also have a sample proclamation. We really do appreciate it when folks send us their proclamations or uh, press releases from the signing of the proclamation. We do our best when we receive those to, um, to piggyback off of that, um, promoting it via social media and in our e-news. Um, we also just like to keep track state by state of how many proclamations um, happen during Community Action Month. So once again, just ask you to keep us informed um, as you move forward. Um, please do reach out to Johnny, who is our communications lead here at the partnership, and let him know what's going on. We want to support you, and um, we want to be able to track our progress um, and our reach for Community Action Month. We have additional resources listed. Um, uh, 10 media relation tips for your nonprofit is an excellent guide in terms of press coverage. How do you get press coverage? And um, how do you engage the press? Um, we also have a guide on social media effectiveness uh, included in the Community Action Month Toolkit. And of course, um, we just want to to once again promote the National Community Action Impact Report. Um, if you need any assistance in terms of ideas about how to promote that, you need additional tools, you need resources around that, we're here to help. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll actually send out, in addition to this PowerPoint, um, a one-pager where you can order Community Action Impact Reports, as well as uh, folks I'm sure have seen by now the one-pager uh, for the Impact Report. So we'll send that out to all of those on the call, and we'll be sure to post that on the website as well so that you can make those available during Community Action Month. 
We've also released with the toolkit our annual notice of awards and scholarships. Uh, many of you may know that at our annual convention, we highlight folks who have, um, um, for the Jane Thomas uh, Award, uh, for example, volunteers in particular, who have made a great contribution to community action. And in terms of the Sergeant Shriver Award, that's where we highlight individuals who have come to us, they've moved through our service um, or holistic service approach process, and they have become self-sufficient and they're now giving back, and not only giving back, but advocating on behalf of those that we serve, on behalf of vulnerable populations. So um, if there are folks in your agency, in your community that maybe you've honored or maybe you'd like to honor, um, we would love to hear about them. Uh, the deadline for nominations is June 6th for the Jane Thomas Award and the Sergeant Shriver Award. Um, for each of those, there's an application form included in the toolkit. In terms of the items that you can include to support your case, there are some specific items requested, um, such as letters from the uh, CEO or executive director. But if you'd like to include press clippings or a video of their work or service, um, we would welcome those as well. Um, they all help in, in making the very hard decision in the end as to who receives the award. And uh, for those award winners, I do want to highlight that they're able to attend the national convention in August free of charge. Um, their registration is covered and we're able to reimburse uh, travel expenses. And they do receive a plaque um, during the award ceremony on the Thursday of the annual convention. Uh, something new uh, in recent years that we're also offering is a scholarship opportunity for our annual convention, and it's the Avril Wiseman Scholarship Opportunity. Um, some may be familiar with Avril. She was a longtime um, uh, 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 colleague here at the partnership, um, just recently, in recent years, uh, retired, and um, one of her key roles was to convene the annual convention and the management and leadership training conference. And um, she was extremely passionate about training and increasing the capacity at local agencies. So in her honor, there's a scholarship, one for a board member of a local community action agency, and then the other for community action professionals at a uh, local community action agency or state association. And so the uh, application for each of those is included, once again, in the Community Action Month Toolkit. Um, we'd also like to see as much information as you can um, bring to bear um, to advocate for uh, your scholarship nominee. And yes, you can self-nominate. Um, so feel free to complete the application yourself and turn it in, um, either as a board member or as a community action professional. Um, the National Community Action Foundation wasn't able to join us on today's webinar, but we have communicated with them and they really wanted us to stress that as we move throughout Community Action Month, we need to do more than speak specifically about CSPG. We need to speak about the uh, whole agency, uh, what the impact of community action as a whole is. Um, so um, this is once again an opportunity to show um, how um, our programs uh, affect vulnerable populations. Um, we can also, if possible, demonstrate um, how our programming or those that we serve would be affected if funding were cut. Um, so as you know right now, one of the reasons that uh, NCAP couldn't be on this webinar is that they're on the Hill advocating for uh, funding for community action. And so um, when we can make the case in terms of our impact, in terms of how uh, possible cuts might affect our agencies and those we serve, it helps them to make the case. Um, it makes the way for them. It helps it to be easier um, as they speak with congressional officials about um, why we matter. Um, site visits, if you do convene a site visit, we talked a bit earlier about site visits and we do have a guide uh, that gives some resources, tips and tools for uh, convening site visits. If it's going to be with a locally elected official, we do encourage you to contact NCAP and let them know that that site visit is going to occur. Um, if they can, oftentimes NCAP will come and participate 
um, in that site visit in an effort to um, connect with that locally elected official. So please do uh, keep them in the loop as well as, as we move throughout Community Action Month. So once again, just a plug to keep us informed um, and to keep NCAF informed and to keep NASCAP informed as well. Um, we're all working together um, to um, amplify our voice as a network. So just want to take a moment to see if there are any questions. If you do have questions, feel free to um, enter them into the chat box. Um, we have received a few comments, and so we do have um, uh, someone who can testify as to the, um, the, the impact that uh, Canva has made in their work and in their agency, and just have noted that uh, for the annual membership, which is maybe $100 to $150, um, the, the value add is, is, is great. Um, so, and then we've also had someone who's requested a way for us to connect community action professionals across the network, particularly during Community Action Month. So we'll look into that. I know that in the past we've had a community action kind of um, working group or networking group or peer-to-peer -peer support group and um, just as our capacity has fluctuated, um, engagement with that group has, uh, has fluctuated. So we'll work to find those, some other means, whether through um, uh, uh, making that group active again or using LinkedIn or using Facebook as a way to connect folks. Okay, and then we do have a question related to the current bill in progress to reauthorize CSPG or the Community Services Block Grant. Um, uh, I would defer to the um, National Community Action Foundation regarding the progress there um, and whether or not um, uh, what they sh what should or shouldn't be shared in relation to to the reauthorization process. So I'll just, I'll defer to NCAP, who's our lead for legislative um, uh, advocacy around CSBG on that. And then, um, Johnny, you might be able to answer this question. Someone is wondering if you're able to share the Canva meme folder with folks who might also have a Canva account. Uh, yeah, someone actually already um, emailed me about that. Um, I was having trouble uh, sharing the entire folder, so I had to, um, Share the memes individually, but I can absolutely do that. Um, if uh, if you have a Canva account and you're interested in getting those, uh, just shoot me an email. It's uh, it's kind of linked, but it's uh, I can't. I'll, you know what? I'll type it into the the chat box so that everyone has it. So just get in contact with me, and um, I will uh, I'll send you the uh, Canva memes. Thanks, Johnny. And then um, we also have um, a participant who's just making us aware, thanks, Ashley, um, that uh, it can take 30 days notice to get a proclamation from uh, your governor's office. So we'll want to start um, as soon as possible if you're thinking about doing a proclamation for this Community Action Month. And, and we have another person that's just saying Canva is great. So <laughs> for those of you on the line who are not familiar with Canva, um, would encourage you to check it out at least. And I can see too that some folks um, are already working on their proclamation, so we're excited about that and just ask that you, you keep us informed. We love pictures, photo ops, um, articles. Um, we'd like to catalog those things and um, push those out to, to amplify our voice. So with that, um, oh, and one more uh, question came in. Um, yes, we would like, a, a, well, if there is a, so someone is asking about, would we like a copy of the proclamation request? And I would say yes, um, just because sometimes we do get questions around, um, you know, how should I approach um, uh, the proclamation request or how should I approach um, an, an elected official or how do I put together a press release. So um, if there are things that you're issuing that you think could be templates for others in the network, we would greatly appreciate um, having those on hand and we can start to catalog and file those so that we can share them. Uh, particularly with the communications folks who are who are working to um, engage um, during Community Action Month. 
So um, with that, um, we've come to the end of our time together for today's webinar. Um, we just want to put in a plug for our annual convention, which is coming up in August. We'll be in Chicago August 28th through the 30th, and that's the main event. Of course, we always have pre-convention activities, uh, and we will do so in Chicago the 26th and 27th. So we hope to see you there. Information is available on our website, and online registration will be going live today or tomorrow. So once again, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to engaging during Community Action Month. Take care.